Josh Green here for Tanks and Tales. I'm delighted to be joined by Jamie Lewis. Jamie, it's, it's been a while since we've we've seen you on our screens. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, yeah, not too bad. Thanks, mate. How are you? Um, very well, very well. Uh, I mean, just first of all, um, the question goes, how how much darts have you been playing? We saw you at, at Q School. We saw bits and pieces on the Challenge Tour. It seems like you're starting to pick, up, pick those darts up again. Yeah, I have. Yeah, obviously, I went to Q School. Um, obviously, didn't didn't get through. Um, I got through to the final stage. Um, I only played the first two days of the final stage because I actually got. I was a bit ill for the last two, so I had to go home, which was a bit unfortunate. Um, but yeah, things are starting. Hopefully, starting to come back to normal now with the COVID restrictions and stuff like that. And, and regular tournaments are happening more. So, yeah, this year I'm literally just going to try and go to as many tournaments as I possibly can enter really and try and sort of um, get my form back mm. in, in terms of getting your form back is it just important for you to get out there and just be playing darts it doesn't really matter too much about what level local tournaments back out on the challenge tour the the, the, the standard there is obviously extremely high so just get there and get the feel back of playing darts yeah, like every level. I mean, even sort of local leagues, we've started that back on a Wednesday night. And as you say, the local tournaments, I actually went to a local tournament um, last weekend and I won it as well, which is stuff like that is obviously great for confidence. So, yeah, I mean, it was obviously when we had the COVID times and we were just playing sort of one block every sort of few months, it was just hard to sort of get a rhythm going and stuff. Um, so I'm sort of happy things are more or less back to normal now. And there's a lot of local tournaments around me coming up. So yeah, sort of playing at every level from sort of local league to the challenge tour. And just like you say, just trying to get my form and sort of get my confidence back up there. I feel like some players maybe thrive throughout that time and others really struggle, especially with online darts, being able to play over a webcam and things like that. Some people enjoyed it, others didn't. Is that something that you, you struggled with a little bit, do you think? Yeah, I struggled a bit with you. I didn't mind playing online. I just found it hard to... Um, sort of get used to it because I was always thinking I, I was in a strange situation with online darts because I was either thinking that the guy was maybe like sort of cheating or, or doing mm. something dodgy but then at the same time then if I started playing really well I, I'd think like or maybe he thinks I'm doing something dodgy now so I was I was I found it hard to just sort of play darts and the online stuff mm. but it was good I mean I did a, a few online tournaments and I did enjoy them to be fair I didn't play my best darts but yeah, like you say, some people sort of thrive through it and loved all the online stuff. I mean, I, I knew some people were playing every night when they online in, yeah. in competitions and that, which, you know, fair play and stuff. But yeah, I, I like to play in person, personally, and sort of go to tournaments, no matter where they are. But I just sort of like to play people sort of in person. Yeah. And just going back to Q School, I mean, where do you think your your game is at? There were some games that were, there were some good averages going and others were a little, a little lower. Is it just the consistency with, with your game now? Yes, consistency and sort of probably a bit of lack of sort of confidence in my own game as well. Especially, I mean, Q School, I, I was, I think if it had been another month maybe and a bit more practice, I think I'd have been a bit more ready for it. But it, it was what it, you know, it is what it was kind of thing. But um, yeah, I played okay in patches. I was quite happy with the way I played in patches, um, especially the first day of the first stage. I was playing really well and up until I lost to Darren Johnson, who just played amazing, to be fair. It was a really good game. And yeah, patches were there, which I was quite happy with. Um, and then same again on the challenge tour a week later. I was playing well in patches. It's just sort of finding that consistency now where not getting the legs, not, not having one good leg and then sort of falling off for a bit. It's sort of, I need to get back into that consistent zone. Yeah. And it's something that so many players say about Q school. It gets harder every year, but it's it's so true. And, and any player that's dropping off the tour has a really, really hard job to get back on with the quality that you now see at Q School. Yeah, well, yeah, it is. It is getting a lot harder every year. And like you're saying, there's, there's people, I mean, there was a lot of people in Q School that I'd, you know, I'd never, never even heard of in a way. And they were hitting, you know, 100 on averages and stuff. It's just, it is crazy. But people are out there now practicing flat out. Um, and, you know, it's, it's all up to me now to make sure that I'm putting the hours in. So, and, you know, I have to sort of up my level because everyone sort of is doing the same thing. Mm. Do you think that's very much because the rewards are there now? There's huge prize money in darts and people are looking at that and going, if I can produce those big averages, I can go and win a card. There's opportunities for me to, to make a life of being a darts player and, and really have the, the life of a, a TV darts player. 
Yeah, I mean, you could the, the, you could make an unbelievable living now. I mean, when I first got my cards, um, you'd win a game on the Pro Tour, and it was two hundred pounds you'd win then, mm. which wasn't that long ago. And like now, this year, it's up to it was seven hundred and fifty pounds for just winning the one game on tour. Mm. So yeah, I think people are looking at these prize money, and I mean, you don't even have to be sort of in the top sixteen or whatever now, and you could still make a really good living out of the game. So yeah, that's obviously an incentive why I think more and more people are practicing and playing and obviously they've got the sort of system now all the way down to sort of the jdc level and stuff where you know it's a great system now to come through so i, I just think that is just going to get harder and harder to be honest yeah you mentioned the changing changing prize money there you've you're still a relatively young man in the in the world of darts but you you came into it very young i think you're sort of 1920 when you were playing pdc darts how much has it changed in that that decade yeah, it's changed a great deal. I mean, you've got, when I first had a card, you didn't have the stuff like the streaming boards. You couldn't watch anything of it online. And obviously you've got the Darts Connect now where people can see all your stats and stuff, which I think that people are still getting used to that, I think, as well, because you didn't used to have that. It just used to be on the sort of the chalk of the whiteboard and stuff. But yeah. yeah, it's changed a hell of a lot since I've started. But like you say, I'm still young and I'm still only 30 years old now. So it's sort of a like a fresh start for me. I'm sort of starting from the bottom again and sort of have to try and work my way back up there. Yeah. You say about starting from the bottom, there's been a couple of Welsh stars that have, have done a similar thing in, in terms of they've started right from coming from coming from Q school with Johnny Clayton and, and Gerwin Price, who are now mm-hmm. right at the top of the game, arguably the two best players in the world at the moment. Are they people that you, you look towards and you think, I can emulate that, I can go from being coming through Q school and going right to the top of the game again. Yeah, 100%. And especially with Johnny. I mean, Johnny doesn't live far from me. He's only about 10 miles away from me, where I live. And we used to, he used to play in my the same singles league as me on a Wednesday night. And what he's done is unbelievable, to be honest. I mean, I always knew if he'd get into the PDC, he'd do well. But I didn't think he'd do as well as he has now, to be fair to him. He's absolutely flying. So, yeah, obviously, I look at Johnny and see what he's done and stuff. And I just think, you know it's possible to do it. So it's just sort of started again now. And I mean, like I say, I, I want to try and do a lot of tournaments this year. I'm going to do a few of the WDF ones as well, just to sort of keep the arm in and keep playing and keep competitive really. And yeah, it'll all be aiming towards January then uh, for Q school next year. And hopefully I, I'll be able to get my card back and be ready to be back on the tour. With Johnny for you, is, is it a case of it? It was a little bit of a shock when you're seeing him turn up at these TU tournaments week in, week out. and and winning them, I don't know how many TV tournaments, I think it was five or six last year that that Johnny won. He's gone from strength to strength and he really is considered one of the world's best now. Yeah, to be honest, I think he probably is. Well, he probably, you're talking between three of them at the minute with him and Gezi and Peter Wright. They, they just seem to be flying all three of them. But yeah, what Johnny's in his end. I mean, he's always been an amazing player, even back when he was just playing sort of county level and local league. He was amazing back then. Um, but yeah, he just seems to be getting better and better. And I mean, fair play to him. He's a great person as well, Johnny. He's been a good friend to me as well. Yeah. And just just on yourself, um, if you don't mind me asking, it was reported a couple of years ago that you were going through a bit of <laughs> anxiety and and struggling maybe a little bit with that. Is is that something that you've been able to to clear through the last couple of years? And are you feeling in a in a better place or? Yeah, I'm definitely in a lot better place than I was. I mean, it all sort of sprung the on the rates around the same time as sort of COVID happened. Um, and it was obviously, it was hard at the time. And there was nothing that the PDC and that could have done. They had to do these blocks. We were going away and just playing these six days in a row. And you couldn't leave the hotels and stuff like that. And it all got on top of me a little bit. I just couldn't handle it. I mean, like you were saying earlier, a lot of players l- liked it. They liked being away for six days and playing tournament after tournament. Mm. But just the change for me, I don't know what it was. It just didn't sort of agree with me. Um, and yeah, I did suffer a bit. Of, I mean, we weren't allowed to leave the house even back home because of COVID. You know, you had to stay in and you couldn't go out. And it all got a little bit um, on top of me. But I was speaking to, I obviously had the chance to speak to a sporting chance um, through the PDPA, who were brilliant to be fair with me. And yeah, I had a few sessions and stuff. And it, that worked, that helped a lot. Um and now, yeah, I'm in a lot better place, to be fair. Now things are coming back to normal. It's even better for me as well. That's really good to hear. And I know Sporting Chance and the PDPA have done some some great work with so many of the players in the PDC. You know, before the development tours, they 
they host a, a talk with all the players there. And I think it's important that young players, as, as well as the players on the tour, are aware these services are available and they've, they've obviously been a help to yourself. Yeah, it's really important. I mean, to be fair, they, they were really good with me. You know, they put me straight in and got me got me into having these meetings and stuff, which, yeah, they, I, like I say, they, like you're saying, the help is there. If, pe if people are struggling with anything, they've only got to ring the PDPA and they'll do their best to help them out. So, yeah, credit to them there. Mm. And just for yourself, going forwards, there's plenty of challenge tours on the horizon. You say you might be playing a bit of WDF stuff. Have you got any sort of targets in in your mind for this year where do you want to be come the end of the year yeah i mean um it was, i was sort of sort of planning my year at the start of the year and then um i was quite fortunate then that mike at mb sports management mm. management got in contact and said he'd like to manage me and stuff um i wasn't expecting anyone to be offering me that because i haven't really been you know up there you know, the last couple of years so he's given me a good opportunity now and uh, we've sort of done a little diary that I've sort of planned out what we're going to be doing. Obviously, I'm going to be doing all the challenge tours. I have a look at the WDF, and we're going to I'm going to do most of the sort of big ones, the gold events, and sort of see how they go. And I might do the odd few others, but um, yeah, it's sort of taking you know my opportunities now, trying to go to these tournaments. It'd be nice to maybe win a challenge tour this year. That that's one of my goals, one of the event sort of things, and you know hopefully more. But it'd be nice to just win one of those events. Yeah, um, and then hopefully win a WDF event as well, and anything else then on top. Um, happy days, sort of thing. And you mentioned having the management on board. Is it important to have a, a sort of a, an avenue of support, I guess, and someone else that's dealing with the things that you maybe don't want to quite deal with as a as a darts player, and just having a little bit of pressure off in, in that case? Yeah, and it's quite nice to be backed as well. I mean, I've, I've had some good chats with Mike, and he fully believes in me and stuff. So it's just nice to have someone behind you that also knows how well you can sort of do and is pushing you forward. So it's giving me that bit of more of an oomph now as well to practice more because I know he's backing me and stuff. So I think it's going to do me well this year now. And hopefully um, I'll have a good year this year in a lot of the tournaments I go to. And it's all sort of aiming towards um, Q School then next year and just trying to get myself ready for that. Um, that's sort of the end goal then. Um, and hopefully then next year I'll be back on the tour, hopefully. Yeah, it, that is the end goal then, to be back on the PDC and competing right at the top end of, of World Darts. Yeah, 100%. That's, that's the goal. I want to be back playing on the on the Pro Tour. I mean, I know my game is there. I mean, it's, it's a little bit patchy at the minute, but I'm putting a lot of effort in now. Um, and it, like I say, if I can find that consistency back, and that'll only lead to building more confidence as well. And yeah, we're going to go from there and just take one tournament at a time this year and um, sort of see what happens. OK, excellent. Well, it's been really nice chatting, Jamie. Thank you very much for your time again. And uh, best of luck in whatever next whatever the next tournament is for yourself. Brilliant. Thank you, Josh. Cheers.